Frost. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here. I am Emma Toops. I'm the executive director for American Warriors. This event is the Purple Connection, and it is hosted and sponsored by my company, um, David and I's company, Toops Consulting, LLC. I'm going to begin with a few administrative announcements regarding how we're going to conduct the event. So um, you may notice that the event is being recorded. So please mute your microphone if you are not speaking. Also, please turn on your video and have your full name showing so that our presenters can see who is here. When you're a presenter, it's always much appreciated to see uh, people's faces versus black boxes. So please um, be mindful of our presenters. Okay. So the rules of engagement for the panel program and the Q&A will be explained a little bit later um, prior to the first panelist speaking. And as there are people who are continuing to come on and I'm not gonna be able to kind of catch everybody as they do that, help us to create the attendance roster and also facilitate useful connections by in the public chat channel, provide your name, and uh, the contact information that you're willing to share and um, include what you offer or seek from the Purple Connection community. The chat will be saved at the end of the program before the end of the meeting. It'll get cleaned up of any superfluous mini, you know, miscellaneous um, data, but everything that is of a point of contact information requests or, or whatnot of what you offer, those will be shared to all attendees of the event in a future email. Everyone who um, registered for the event, as well as those who attend, uh, will receive an email to access the recording. And that'll be a few days from today because the video will get um, edited a little bit and then, and then hung up. So, with that said, I'll go ahead and begin the program. Next slide. So I am the facilitator for the program, so I'll kind of help guide us from one slide to the next. Um, so thank you all for being here. Welcome to everyone for whom this is their first Purple Connection event. Thank the person who invited you to attend as they felt that you might benefit or contribute by being part of this community. This is the agenda. So I'll begin with an introduction to the American Warriors and the Purple Connection that will fo be followed by our educational networking program that has a panel event of three organizations or so three categories of um, people followed by a Q&A with the panel. Those questions, if you would send those to me in a private chat. I will ask those specific of the individual that is being asked of, or if it's more of a general community question, then I will ask it in general. And any one of the panelists or maybe a subject matter expert or someone who can speak to the question from the community can respond. We will do that for 15 minutes, the Q&A. The transition tip is an educational portion of the program. Let's focus specifically on something general that is relevant to transition. Not necessarily for someone in transition from the military, but life, school, career, or business, a educational topic of, of transition. I'll, I'll follow that with how do you get involved as far as American Warriors, and then we will wrap up the meeting by giving you a preview of the lineup for next month and uh, some contact information um, for, for me, for anything that may have occurred through the event. All right, so next slide. An introduction to American Warriors. So American Warriors is a special interest group of the ACA Business Club. And I am the co-founder of American Warriors, which I founded with another Army retiree in 2014. I am now the executive director of this SIG, we call them, of the, of the club. 
So the mission statement of American Warriors is here listed. It's American Warriors provides educational and networking opportunities for veterans who are leaders in business and supports the transition of active duty service members into private and public sector business. So the special interest group of the club, the club is a private club with the philosophy that business flows out of relationships. Sorry, my nose is drippy. Okay, club members are committed to creating solid connections by learning and practicing the fundamentals of strategic networking and relationship building. So the American Warriors are club members who have an affinity with or support those who have served our country in military or possibly even public service. The Purple Connection is one vehicle for American Warriors to fulfill its mission. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, so the challenges of transition from the military, this is a very well-researched problem. It's evident by the multitude of military support nonprofits and community organizations that provide services to address those problems or those issues. Driving Community Impact is a white paper that was published in April of 2015 by researchers of the IVMF of Syracuse University. In this study, they determined after several years of research and thousands of surveys that the leading gap of services or the leading gap in this problem was not in the lack of services. It was in the lack of connectedness of those services. So a couple of the things that were stated in some of the survey responses was, I need help with a lot of things, but I feel like I'm by myself. I don't really, I, I can't trust people. I don't know who I can depend on. Next slide. So how do you solve it? You create a partnership of stakeholders who have a common goal for supporting American warriors. So the Purple Connection is this community that we are trying to create of partnered stakeholders with a common focus of service or so support and care so that we can effectively address the challenges of transition. Next slide. So I've been asked about this in the past. So what is up with the name? There's actually two reasons for it. The purple connection, part of it is that there is military jargon where the color for joint is purple. So when our military is operating overseas on a deployment, that environment is comprised of a multitude of participants of seemingly disparate, disparate purpose, but they have a common purpose and it's the operation that unites and focuses their effort. So TPC, this is an acronym of course, um, is an attempt to replicate this type of joint environment to support the American warrior in transition. Now, another reason for the name is that when you combine the colors of red and blue, you get the color purple. So the people who are in this community, some will identify more closely to the military support network, they're civilians or they are retirees or family members. Um, then there's those who are military, they're actively serving, they're veterans, they're retirees or whatnot. But when you make that connection of one or the other, it's purple. Next slide. So here is the vision and mission for TPC. We want to create awareness to enable access and then empower action through collaboration and encouragement to, exp to expedite reintegration, support growth and healing and enable opportunities. We do this by regularly bringing together community experts and facilitating those connections through educational networking. Next slide. All right. So for those who are not military, there's a little military culture lesson. Anytime we get together in a military focused engagement, 
there's rules of engagement for those who are participating. And this is so that the execution of whatever it is can go more smoothly. So here is the ROE for our panel program and our networking. Each participant is going to have eight minutes to deliver their remarks. I will have a timer. The timer can be stopped short if, you, if the presenter doesn't have eight minutes of remarks to make. And then that time is given back so that um, we can use it in the Q&A or it can be used up entirely. Um, but when the timer goes off, wrap up the sentence and we move on to the next presenter. Once each panelist has spoken, there'll be 15 minutes for Q&A, like I described a little bit earlier. Private chat your question to me, because some people might have the same question. Some people might have a question that they're afraid to ask. Um, the event is being recorded and some people may not be comfortable public speaking, but whatever the case may be, send your questions to me and I will ask them for you. After the Q&A, will be eight minutes for a transition tip. This transition tip is generic to any type of transition, purely educational. So the person that who normally will deliver this in a program is a coach or educator of some sort. After the presentations, if you haven't already, share your information for a point of contact in the public chat, how you serve or need support from the community, that chat will be saved and all <coughs> a copy in a future email and then follow up as you like with each other um, for those folks who you can support or can get help from. We'll do the event announcements and then we'll wrap up the meeting. All right, next slide. So first up in our panel is our veteran entrepreneur, excuse me, Grant Montgomery, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, retired who is a financial advisor for Infinitas. Grant, you're up. Okay, great. Thanks for the introduction, Emma. Appreciate that. And I posted my LinkedIn profile and my email address in the chat for everyone. Just a little bit about me. I retired from the Army, uh, transitioned out, right, in 2017, a few years ago now. And I'm an advisor, and I provide oversight and guidance to all aspects of my clients' financial lives. While I was my last year or so in the Army, I completed all my required licensing prior to leaving active duty so I could immediately move into the field. And I really wanted to continue my passion for leadership, coaching, teaching, and, and mentoring individuals in the Army. I wanted to continue that and expand that to more people in the community, and, and eventually the goal is, is nationwide. As we look at entrepreneurship in general uh, and uh, veteran entrepreneurs, you're moving from an area of a tremendous job security and steady paychecks into a completely unpredictable financial life. Maybe you need startup capital. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've got enough money saved up, but you can look at for startup capital. You can look at angel investors, venture capital, maybe a small business loan from a bank. Uh, the SBA program is really good. And, and they want to they want to they're there to get get small businesses off the ground just like that. Maybe it's a loan from a relative. You know, how are you going to get started? The next next one financially is your living expenses. Maybe you don't need startup funds. Maybe you've, you've been working on your side hustle for the last few years in either the military or or your your previous employer but you might need money for living expenses. Yeah, That's idea. the next the next financial aspect you need to look at. And, and normally, if you're in uh, a W-2 job or the military, I would say you need about three months of living expenses saved up in your rainy day fund. If you're going into entrepreneurship, you need to really build your roadmap out and see how long you think it's going to take to first break even and, and not be in the red, but then to actually make a profit and look at your living expenses for that all the way out. And, and I'm telling you, you're going to, you're going to have this day for, for a lot of days and weeks and, and months, hopefully not years where expenses are going to exceed your income. And one day you're going to be, you're just going to break even. You're just going to be happy to get to zero. 
and, and that's, that's hard, to, hard to fathom sometimes, but it really is. You'll be happy just to get to zero. That will be an exciting day, I promise you. And it's gonna take longer than you think. If you think it's gonna take one year, I, I would definitely plan two years because life is tough. It's a whole different ball game. And just plan for it to, to go longer than, than you really think it will go. Uh, what I talk to everyone about leaving, a, leaving the military, if you're thinking about life insurance, you do want to look at that about a year prior to your transition window, because if you have any type of VA disability claim, the insurance companies have access to that. And once you have a VA disability rating, then that's going to increase your insurance premium. Whereas if you, if you lock in your policy prior to your VA disability claim and prior to transitioning out of the military, then your premium set for, for however long the policy you set the policy for. And then just a little bit more about me. I feel that most people truly don't know how to grow their assets beyond just working more hours. And then we live in a world of abundance. We have thousands of, of channels on TV, the internet, YouTube, direct TV, wherever, wherever you look at those type of things, just thousands of ways to do that, to consume information. Well, just like that, there are thousands of ways to invest your money. And people don't have the time or the energy to research all of those options and invest both effectively and efficiently. And I really focus on human behavior as we move through the many transitions of our lives. And, and what we're talking about today is one of those big transitions. You transitioned into the military, and at some point you're gonna transition out of the military. My conversations are about goals and dreams. I wanna know what you wanna be able to do. What's, what's your passion? What do you want life to be like? Is it family, charity, stewardship, is it a hobby, community service? Really, what do you want to do if you did not have to work? And, and I'm always saddened to see financial professionals they only look at one aspect of their clients' lives. And normally that's asset management that gets all the, the headlines and the attention. I discuss cash flow management, investment positioning, tax planning, and estate preservation with all my clients. A change in any one of these areas affects all the areas. Now, as you're beginning your venture or your adventure, you need to develop your story, develop your why. Your story shows the problem that your idea solves. Your why is the passion and the importance. And we know since the beginning of time, that's how we have communicated well with stories. We go back thousands of years to cavemen. They told stories. They drew pictures on the wall. Telling a story today has the impact of, of getting your message across clearly and concisely. Now, I talked about your roadmap. You wanna prioritize your goals, create your roadmap and your timeline. You've got to choose where you spend your time and your finances. And remember abundance, we have lots of choices. In the military, our time and our choices are very limited. Even if you think you got to a, a high rank and had a lot of choices, you still had a lot of limitations. When you're on your own and you're in the, in the real world starting your own venture, product, or idea, or service, you are going to have, you're going to be overloaded with choices. The first part of this that you want to do are informational interviews, and you want to do this long before you transition. And this is going to, these still are truly relevant, but they have a twist from the corporate job goal. We hear about when you're doing an information interview to go work at a large corporation, that that's what you want to, that's the idea. Well, in this type of informational interview, you want to present your concept and ask for feedback on it. You need to show your passion here. You need to connect with people in similar fields to what your idea is in and to people in different fields. You really need a variety of opinions. You want to connect with veterans and non-veterans. You need to get both sides, the opinions of, of both those types of people. Uh, family. Family is always where we start, great place to start. Unfortunately, it's really not typically a good source of feedback. Hopefully, they want to support you. So they're probably going to tell you it's a good idea because they feel that's the best way to support you. On the other hand, I do joke, if your in-laws say it's a bad idea, that it'll never work, that may be a, a good contrarian indicator that it will work. Here now, I'm going to share my screen, and I want to, I want to go over some resources uh, for podcasts and other groups. And David, if you could give me the permission to share there. 
uh, podcasts that I like are Veteran on the Move. That's a that's a local that's local with Joe Crane. Okay. Next is Beyond the Uniform. This is Justin Nasiri. It, it's a little more corporate focus, but it's still a great great podcast. John Lee Dumas, Army veteran, EO Fire. Jocko Willink, he, he was a Navy SEAL. Uh, Seth Godin with Akimbo, very outside of the box thinker. For groups here in the area, we have Bunker Labs and Joe Crane is actually one of the community ambassadors for that. One Million Cups, Kansas City. They do, they're do. they all focused on entrepreneurship. Please wrap up. Velocity, Velocity Lee Summit, also entrepreneurship. KC SourceLink. Again, these are all entrepreneurship links, entrepreneurships, uh, focused organizations to help you out. And then just a few books to look at. A Whole New Mind by da- Daniel Pink, Beyond Reason, Roger Fisher, and The Colby Cognitive Connection by Kathy Colby. I think these are all, all great, great resources for you. And then finally, Stop the sharing there. And then that's going to that's gonna wrap up. I think uh, LinkedIn, don't forget LinkedIn. It's always good, not just for, for job posting and finding a job. It's a great place to build your network and make connections with people all over the country. You want to get on there. You want to post, comment. You want to get engaged. And then don't forget Chambers of Commerce and any church or other social groups in your area where there's a, a non-military presence. Appreciate the time and, and hope some of that uh, helps someone out. Thanks, Emma. All right, thank you so much, Grant. Uh, before we move on to the next, I want you to do one thing. Say out loud to everybody, which is the best way to contact you? Say your name and the best way to contact you. Uh, sure, my name again is Grant Montgomery and the best way to contact me is grant at Infinitas KC, my email. G-R-A-N-T at I-N-F-I-N-I-T-A-S-K-C dot com. All right. Great. Thank you so much. All right. We will move on to our next presenter, which is our community organization category. Candace Haynes is a military spouse, and she is the military and community outreach director for Grantham University. You're up, Candace. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Emma. You're welcome. Wow, Zoom, yes, I know there's a lot of reflection on my glasses. If Zoom has taught me one thing is I need contact lenses. <laughs> but in any event, um, thanks for having me on today. It's good to see a lot of you. Um, you know, as we all know, we, we haven't done a whole lot of in-person networking. It's not seen a lot of faces in quite some time. So it's good to see a lot of you, even if it is virtually. So there are three things that I want to cover quickly. I don't want to get Emma's bell. Is um, <laughs> just talk about a little bit about Grantham on the university side, talk a little bit about what we're trying to build in the Kansas City area with in terms of corporate partnerships. And then lastly, talk a little bit about the upcoming veteran and military career and transition fair that we that we are fourth annual that's coming up uh, in February. So those three things. So first off, um, for those of you that are not familiar with Grantham University, uh, we, we just reached 70 years old. Uh, we were founded in 1951 by Donald Grantham, who was a returning soldier himself from World War II and had a vision to create distance education models for soldiers who were coming back from the war. And in doing that, of course, we didn't have internet back then, but he, he saw the need for a distance model and started creating correspondence courses originally out of Los Angeles. So as years went by, we we developed into a full service university that is still our model today, 100% online. Everything that we do um, is online. We we are mainly focused, uh, historically has been on the military and veterans and their family members. Of course, we do have a lot of civilian students as well. We find that working adults in general seem to do well in online learning environments because of the, the flexibility that they provide. And of course, military, is a perfect example of that, uh, needing that flexibility. So briefly with Grantham, you know, one of the things that we do that, that's a little unique for some other schools, you know, we do have, of course, military tuition um, discounts, but what I think what's unique, something just popped up, 
is that we do extend those benefits to military spouses, military children, including stepchildren, okay? So we really take it out there to the extended family. And what that represents is a flat rate tuition that stays the same all the way through graduate school, does include textbooks and software. So really what you see is what you get. Um, it's pretty tough to beat that rate. Um, I, am, I know you're in grad school, you can probably attest to that. But um, so I really appreciate that Grantham has kept that program going. Classes do start every single month. So the first month of any semester people can start. They run for eight weeks long and we don't have any specific login times or anything like that. Um, but the other thing about uh, military and veterans is that we will actually do a free assessment of your prior work experience and your academic experience. So let's say if you are a veteran during your service, you, know, you had certain certifications or certain things that you completed, we actually do look at those to try to count those towards transfer credits. We have an extremely liberal transfer policy when it comes to um, bringing people over, particularly service members. So keep that in mind because a lot of the hard work that you've done, you don't need to do it over again just because you're in school. So we're really um, happy about that. Um, let's see, I think I think that pretty much wraps it up. Grantham.edu is how you find more information. I'm gonna go ahead and post my, if I can hit here, my LinkedIn and my email um, and then move on. So in terms of partnerships, um, we partner with several organizations, both nonprofit and corporate um, in trying to help educate others. And that doesn't always mean a degree program for everyone. So for example, some employers find that their employees need some leadership training or they need business communication training or some other type of IT training, if you will. Um, we are able to actually pull courses off the shelf and customize those for you and then bundle them into a pricing point that makes sense for your organization. We can also do that, we can do that, of course, on, online, but we also have the ability to come in and do professional development training as well. So it's not just about the degrees. We really want to partner with organizations who value education at multiple levels and see how we can partner um, going forward. Uh, we do offer corporate discounts and things like that, and you can reach out to me if you have questions about that going forward. Grab some water here. Okay, you still have some time, Candice. Okay, tell, I was just tell the community yep. about the veterans yep. resource. I was there. just taking a sip of water. <laughs> okay. So, all right, so we talked about the partnerships. And again, that the partnership program is very flexible in that, again, we're trying to find a model that works for the organization. We're not trying to custom, we're not trying to shove a model you know, down anyone's throat because not everything works for every organization. And we can do the same with nonprofit entities. So lastly, um, some of you have are familiar or have been to our uh, Greater Kansas City Veteran um, Career and Transition Fair that has typically been held at the Overland Park Convention Center. While we would love to do it there for our fourth annual coming up in February, um, it's really the feedback we've gotten is it's just people don't feel safe doing that just yet. Uh, so we have taken it virtual. Now, there are a lot of virtual job fairs out there. there. I've seen a lot, I've been to a lot, and some of them obviously better than others. Um, I will say we're pretty excited about the platform that we have. This year, the company that we're using is called Premier Virtual. They are a veteran owned company to boot. And they have really worked uh, with us closely to, to be as accommodating as they can for, you know, for what we're trying to do. So we will have, there'll be multiple capabilities for the HR personnel um, the, within the organizations to have multiple people in, in their booths at one time, be able to chat and have on-demand video as well, rather than you know, just trying to type back and forth. We have, you can go into a breakout room to do an interview. It's got some really cool capabilities. And then at the end, we can provide you with complete analytics, meaning how many people came into your booth, how long they stayed, how many submitted resumes and on and on. And of course, all the information for the job seekers. So um, with that, from an employer standpoint, you know, it should be a really good one. Of course, from a job seeker standpoint, the same thing goes. Um, we managed to have, was I believe, 156 uh, employers last year in person. By being virtual, we've actually opened that up. 
Uh, we, we are doing some targeted marketing in other uh, military um, friendly areas, or let's say where there's a lot of military. So we're talking Texas, California, Virginia, et cetera. We are including some of those area employers because many of them do have jobs nationwide. In fact, many of our Kansas City organizations, as you know, have you know locations in other states and things like that. So we're trying to um, test it out since it is virtual um, to see you know if we can pull in more people from different markets. We want to make really clear that the family member and the spouses are highly encouraged to come. This is not you know this is about them too. It's it's the entire uh, family and of course community members that are not veterans of course are welcome to come. But it really is a, a veteran focused event, military and veteran focused event. So that is February 11th. It will be uh, from one o'clock in the afternoon till four o'clock. And I'll post the, let me put the, uh, the website link. You can go right there. GK, oops. G, it's gkcvcf.com. And that stands for Greater Kansas City Veteran Career Fair. Very original. <laughs> um, but, it, you, but all the details you, uh, are there for the most employer. Huh? You direct messaged me. Oh, sorry. Here, okay, time out. is up. That actually worked out just fine. Okay, and, good. And um, like I asked of Grant, tell everybody your name and the best way to reach you. Yes. So again, my name is Candace Haynes, and the best way to reach me is email, and it's in the it's in the chat notes. Uh, first initial C, last name Haynes, H-A-I-N-E-S at Grantham.edu. All and right. Summer. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Candace. All right, our next panel program panelist member is the military friendly corporate speaker, which is Kelly Tate, who is a financial advisor for Edward Jones. You're up, Thanks. Kelly. Thanks, Emma. Hi, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for your time this evening. Um, so yes, I'm going to talk about um, Edward Jones and who we are, who we serve. I'll also talk about careers for those with military experience and then just a little bit on my practice and how I serve clients. So Edward Jones is a full service financial services firm really offering com comprehensive wealth planning to individuals, small business owners, and families. We've been around for nearly 100 years, and we're the largest by number of employees um, privately held partnership in the financial services industry. We have 40,000 associates, all employees, and 25,000 of those folks are owners of the firm, um, serving as limited partners. We have over 7 million individual clients across the US and Canada, and over 19,000 financial advisors in every state of the US, um, and over 16,000 offices. Primarily, our structure is one financial advisor and one branch office administrator. So think office manager or administrative person um, in each office, really serving clients individually um, in a face-to-face -face capacity. Although due to, to COVID, we've really gotten a lot better at Zoom. And so we're serving clients in, from my office in Overland Park in 12 states. So really have good capabilities there. Um, who we serve, our clients are serious individual long-term investors. So we work with families, individuals, couples, business owners and their employees and really multiple generations of families. So as I mentioned before, we provide comprehensive wealth planning really holistically throughout our client's life cycle. Everything from thinking about saving for a major purchase to funding college education for kids or grandchildren, um, planning for and then living in retirement, leaving a legacy, um, talking about taxes as well as qualified charitable contributions and just really how to leave the legacy people want to leave um, and really protecting their overall strategy addressing all financial needs in between. Um, so from a career standpoint, we've talked a lot today about transition, transitioning from the military to something else. 
Um, really the skills developed in the military translate well to the financial advisor role at Edward Jones. We found that out of our over 1600 associates who have prior or current military experience, there are a lot of traits that, that those folks have that, that translate well. So things like being mission oriented, um, having self-discipline, having determination to succeed, the ability to persevere and having resilience, um, commitment to service and really making a difference. And then confidence and the ability to handle rejection and keep going towards your ultimate goals have all been extremely helpful for clients um, or for folks transitioning to the financial advisor role. So we're always looking for the right people, um, people with a track record of success, people motivated by challenges and rewards, people really comfortable with independence. That's why we have um, typically one financial advisor and one assistant in an office. We're all entrepreneurs. Um, I run my own practice. I don't have a boss who tells me what time to come in, what time to leave or what to do. I'm responsible for serving my clients in the way that is that makes the most sense for those clients in their best interest. I'm not required to sell any particular products. It's really understanding what is helpful for my clients and then partnering with them to make sure we can help them achieve their goals. We're looking for people who do have that positive um, ability to be sociable, ability to talk to folks, and as I mentioned before, handle re rejection or even hesitation. You know, I'm not ready quite yet to make a move, um, but uh, the ability to build relationships and handle those objections. <clears throat> From a best places to work standpoint, we consistently as a company rank in the Fortune Magazine 100 best places to work list um, across the US. We also regularly, including just recently, um, ranked in the Kansas City best places to work um, in the Kansas City Business Journal. So really proud of that, great place to work. I know it's a fabulous place because I've been here 12 years. Um, I spent over a decade in our corporate headquarters. I ran several of our business units, including our retirement planning business. I also ran our annuity product area. And then I did a stint in recruiting and then recruited myself. So um, about a year ago, I relocated from St. Louis, uh, where our corporate headquarters is, to Kansas, to Overland Park, to assume responsibility for an open office. Really love my current role because even though I had a lot of experience in the home office um, building strategies and helping our advisors understand how to do planning and how to help clients with retirement planning, insurance, all kinds of things, I have the ability now to directly impact my clients and their long-term goals. So how do I do that? I really use an established process where I get to know my clients and understand what's most important to them. I really go deep and try to understand what they envision their future to be, whether it's buying a lake house or buying a boat in retirement or traveling the world. We spend a lot of time talking just about hopes and dreams. And then really, ultimately, the financial and the investing piece are the vehicles we use to help clients achieve their goals and monitor those, the performance of those and make adjustments as necessary to help them get on track and stay on track. But it's really all about what the clients want to do. So I spend a lot of time really understanding what they want to do. Um, and then we just evaluate along the way. So um, with that, I'm going to post in the comments here my website as well as my email address. Those are the best ways to get a hold of me. If you have a question about Edward Jones as a company, if you're looking for potentially learning more about the career opportunity, I can talk to that um, topic. Or if you're interested just in understanding how you could potentially be on track to meet your goals, I'm happy to do a comprehen comprehensive and complimentary discussion with anybody who's interested as well. So Kelly Tate, best way to reach me is email 
Kelly, K E L L Y dot Tate, T like Tom, A T E at edwardjones.com. All right. Thank you so much. You are almost right on the nose. 20 seconds left. Thank you, Kelly. Great information. And so now we will enter into our Q&A. Now, the, the questions um, that are asked, they don't necessarily need to be in the financial services realm. Um, maybe there's kind of a general question that people may have um, that our panelists or maybe people in the community can support. So I have not received any private messages for people's questions. So I may just have to be the first one to ask a question if nobody else has one. All right. Well, I am going to follow up a little bit with what Grant and Kelly have both said about the opportunities in financial services by sharing um, that my first thing after the military was in the financial services industry. I was in insurance. So Kelly or Grant, could you explain a little bit, because I learned this after I already started in building my scratch agency, that there is a uh, focus on offensive products and defensive products in the industry. And I actually was more suited to be in insurance than in financial wealth building. Could, could you explain that? Go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> um, I, I would ask Emma, maybe I haven't heard the, the analogy around offensive or defensive. Um, I've been here for 12 years and really look at it holistically. So tell me kind of give me a little bit, maybe a scenario on what you mean by offensive versus defensive. OK, offensive, not so much as a negative connotation, but the objective. So when I was going through the hiring process, actually with Edward Jones and other financial service industry companies for an opportunity, I found out later on that I kind of talked myself out of financial advising with some of what I was saying. When I was in the military, what I did was focused on protection. Uh -huh. I was a chemical officer. And so I you know, the risk, the risk that was in the environment, it was my, my expertise to kind of inform and train our, um, our people on what those risk exposures were, they're invisible. Um, but how do you respond? How do you mitigate th that risk? And how do you ensure your own safety, so that you can continue to operate at max, well, reduce capacity, but not ineffective. So the way that I communicated in some of these opportunities was focused on protection. And I found out later on that that might've been why I got dropped out of the hiring process sequence because I was focused on protection. I was told there's, there's a focus on kind of the offense or the defense in some of the products in the industry. Interesting. Well, thanks for that perspective, Emma. So I think my perspective on that is they're both important, right? Um, I think when you think about, you use the term building a scratch business. Um, when you think about building a scratch business, which is typically how most financial advisors in the industry start, um, you have to have clients first um, and then you have to um, ensure that you can build a plan for them. And some advisors, and I'm speaking very broadly here, some advisors only focus on the wealth management piece and some advisors focus on the let's put a plan together and let's protect that plan. So I think it's possible um, the your focus on protection was probably taken the wrong way. Um, around, oh, she might only be focused on insurance, but not growing assets. And you really have to do both if you're building a financial advising business from scratch. Um, I am aware of some firms or some advisors who only focus on the um, building of the financial advising piece, focus on, you know, let's 
do the money management and not address the protection, I think that does a disservice, in my opinion, to clients because you can have the best laid plans and have a beautiful portfolio and all kinds of charts and graphs and have an uninsured event. Either someone passes away early, someone is disabled and can no longer work, or someone has to go into a nursing home unexpectedly, which can cost $80,000 a year for several years. That can completely derail your financial strategy that you put in place. So I don't really care what the returns were last year. If you haven't protected the strategy, it's all at risk. So that's why we look at everything from a holistic and understanding goals and how to get you from here to here, but then protect you along the way. So I'm really glad you talked about that um, because it's super important. That's that's good, Kelly. I like what you're saying too. (laughs) Great points there. I want to go a little bit different direction, Emma. I think you ran into a challenge that so many of us veterans face leaving the military is the language. The military has its own language. The Army has its own language. The chemical branch has its own language. We all have these these very niche and drilled down languages that we understand clearly when we PCS and go on leave and ETS and move from ADA to FA, all these things. And, and we sign an MOU when we want to make an agreement with people. It's, 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 we got it. We got that language. But the regular world, the real world has its own language as well. And we really have to learn that. And it, it takes time. There's a lot of nuance to it. And you're dealing with people in a very different way. Uh, nobody's following orders. It doesn't matter what rank you were. And it doesn't matter what rank you are to, you were to begin with, but nobody's following orders and people don't reply to emails immediately or ever sometimes. I, I, I think you're really highlighting a challenge that we all go through. And, you know, I'm still still battling with it even today. It's it's tough sometimes. I think it takes years and I, I've talked to other veterans. It It just takes a long time to get through and learn the nuances of your new language And then when you go into another corporate area, for example, to have their own language. If you go work at Burns and McDonald or uh, any of the major, any corporate, doesn't matter. They have their own internal language that that they know and they speak. And and you got to learn that pretty quick. But but that's what's good about us as veterans is we're we're trainable. Uh, military service members are, are usually very trainable and we can pick up things quickly because we've had to do that a lot, whether it's just training on a, on a base and normal stuff, or it's dropped in the middle of uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, or, or other places like that. All right. So I've gotten a couple of questions. Um, they actually could be a little bit related, but one was, How does the average former military person adjust to being an independent operator um, from the previous career, um, from the previous career that depended on teamwork? And the other question is kind of tied to that is how have um, the military military changed in transition planning for our troops? Now we've got people in the audience, people in the community who are um, maybe a few years or maybe more than a few years from their separation um, in the work that we do with transitioning military, could, could there have been some changes to help improve some of these challenges? Any input from the panel as far as the adjustment first from being part of a team and kind of being your own boss. Do you see that as a significant challenge for people that you've seen start out? It is, yes. it is a significant Roger. challenge. Go ahead. Yes, my name is Roger. Actually, um, I was a chaplain assistant retiree from the Army. Um, I had um, just retired out of 2017 as well. Um, there's a significant change. However, as we are adaptable, in the military, we have to be adaptable in the civilian workforce. And there's a lot of lingo that I, I personally learned myself. Um, I came from um, being in the Chapman Army to um, working with um, Sporting Kansas City as the lead uh, supervisor. And then also, more, most recently, um, working with UPS as a recruiter. 
all those are well versed in different uh, positions. However, one thing came to be the same. Very much like what Grant had mentioned, there's a lot of lingo we have to learn and be familiar with, and we will we'll be able to. We just got to um, put our, our two shoes on one day at a time. And, each, right. and each, coming, um, each coming day would actually be um, a new and improved day. I'm currently working as a um, VFW event coordinator and also um, working for, for um, the Logistic Readiness Center as um, a GS employee myself. So thank you for everyone. Ms. Emma, thank you so much for your um Thank you, Roger, for your, for your comments. All right, very good. Kelly or Grant, even uh, Candice, your observations of some of the challenges from going from a team-focused environment to one where you kind of have to be a self-starter and initiator in the business. As, as a say. team member, we do, we do as a team member have to have just what you said, Emma, uh, be a self-starter and have the initiative. We have to take those qualities and, and move them forward and just put them at the top and remember, hey, now I'm the person who gets to set the whole agenda and prioritize. And that's tough sometimes. Yeah, and I would just add on to it in, in our experience at Edward Jones, because we have very small offices with one advisor and one assistant, essentially, the advisor really does have to be the leader of the team. And so um, the military experience is particularly helpful um, in setting the vision, setting and then executing, building a plan and executing a plan as the leader of the team. So um, I know a number in the Kansas City area in particular, number of very successful financial advisors with um, significant military experience, and that's been helpful. All right, very good. So here's a, a related question about whether or not uh, your, the uh, employers or representatives if they feel that uh, prior service uh, men and women, that that they kind of require orders or a structure in order to execute. I mean, obviously, in what you guys are doing, you're, you're small business owners, but for, uh, you know, general employees who are in your offices or, you know, maybe even at the corporate level or whatnot, um, and they're, they're, you know, part of the tactical force. Do you find their need for that structured instruction to get them going? I, I think that's kind of a, a, an unfortunately negative perception of veterans is that, is that we need orders. It's, it's really the other way around. It's what we were just discussing about. We have the initiative, we have the judgment, and we know how to prioritize and, and figure out what needs to get done versus just uh, waiting around to get told to do something. Okay, I, so it's a stereotype that people assume because we do take actions based on orders, but given the opportunity to actually observe a, a service prior service person in action, they'll find it's quite the opposite. All right, very good. We've got about two and a half more minutes in the Q and A segment. Um, anybody else have a question to ask or? Um, maybe insight to offer. Emma, I think I'd ask you a question if I'm allowed to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so you transitioned um, not too terribly long ago. What, uh, what was your biggest aha or maybe surprise that you encountered? Okay, so I actually have been learning every every year since I got out. I've been, I've been out for seven years now. I've been an entrepreneur the entire time. I intentionally wanted to be an, an entrepreneur, which is how I got into doing an insurance agency as my, my, I call it my first thing after. Um, too often veterans will move on to the next thing after that um, too quickly, sometimes inside of a couple of years because they find that there's not a good fit. They, they may be uh, 
maybe they realize that they made a mistake as far as their expectations or whatnot like this. But one of the first things I, I learned in my first year networking a lot because I was building a scratch agency is that, you know, your personal identity and confidence can be intimidating to people and you just kind of don't even realize it because that's how you kind of have to be in the military is confident and assertive and candid. When you see something not right, you make an on the spot correction. And I, I didn't realize that I was off-putting and, and intimidating to certain people because of that confidence and assertiveness. And um, there, there were several uh, female networking groups that I was in where um, some of the, the executive level women who were part of the group, they, they didn't feel uncomfortable around me. But some of the younger women, I just, I felt like, I felt like I didn't have rapport with them. Um, and, I, and I actually had a business coach um, my first year out and she pointed it out to me. You might have to kind of tone down some of that because you're used to it from having been in the military and being a leader in the military, but not everybody's a leader out here. So that was like surprising. It was just like a light bulb. All right. Well, that was the timer for the Q&A period. So we will move on now to our transition tip. So MJ Eberth is a financial coach with Primerica, and she will give us a transition tip uh, segment on budgeting, I think, is her, is her topic. So we're bringing up her slide deck now. Can't blame me on the tech this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Yep. Uh, as, it, as it's coming up, we'll go ahead and, and uh, I'll just kind of introduce myself and the company for everybody who doesn't know about it, Primerica. Uh, my name is MJ Ebert. I've been with Primerica now for over 21 years. I totally enjoy what I do uh, because I like working with people and putting puzzles together. And that's a, a, a lot of what I do. Primerica has been around since 1977, uh, and we are listed on the, the New York Stock Exchange as PRI, and I'm not here to solicit for you to buy stock, okay, just to tell you that we are a large company, and we have over 130,000 representatives in the United States and Canada, Puerto Rico, and Guam, so we're a large entity, and we are expanding like you wouldn't believe. Through this pandemic, we have gone virtual. Uh, we have been able to do everything uh, that we wanted to do and uh, needed to do for clients. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here uh, and what I do basically is to educate, train, coach and develop people who want to know more about money, because I think that's the, the key. Knowledge is the key. Without knowledge, you can't implement it. You're going to be taken advantage of. And so basically I want, want everybody to know what I've learned. One of the things that I learned, go ahead for the next slide. One of the things that I learned early on was the rule of 72. And the rule of 72 determines how often your money doubles. And I was older before I found that out. And that really disturbed me because I should have learned that in either high school or, or at least in college and did not. So. Did you know, survey finds 42% of Americans will retire broke, and here's why. Keep going. <laughs> For millions, low wage work really is a dead end. If you are only working for minimum wage, today there is no way to get ahead. In fact, it takes at least two to two and a half incomes or more to survive today. Uh, and with the pandemic, I know a lot of people have lost their, lost their incomes. Next, two thirds of Americans have no consistent savings plan and don't save at all. 
that's because they don't see, they can't see the way to get money out of their budget. Everything's accounted for. And that's the main thing that we want to show you how to do that. We put, we put um, a plan of action called the financial needs analysis together to help people to understand exactly where they are and what they need to do. Two thirds of Americans have no consistent savings plan. I already spoke to that. Next, 40% of adults say they would not be able to cover a $400 unexpected expense with cash. Now with this pandemic, that has been really, really traumatic because a lot of people were not prepared for that. All of a sudden in March, we had COVID. Okay, and that was it. And nobody had really spoken to the fact that here we are, we're going to be in a, in a situation where your income is going to stymie and stop because you're not, you don't have a job. Keep going. Total debt shouldered by Americans has hit another record high. A lot of this is student debt too, 13 and a half trillion. This was in 2008. So the slides are a little bit older, but it doesn't matter. It's gone up. Next slide. So what we want to do is to help people to get a grip on what's going on because they really need to understand what where where's the money going. So keep going. Save for retirement or a special purchase. Keep going. Just go ahead and load them all to know exact exactly where you're, you are. Your hard earned money goes each month to avoid the debt trap. Those are the things that we teach. We want to make certain that people understand if you get in debt in today's economy and, the, and COVID comes again or you're going to be downsized again or whatever happens or you're leaving the military and you're not having the same income as you had before. You don't want to get in that debt trap because it's harder to get out than ever because you're not making as much money as you did before. And one of the things that I keep going with the next slide. This is what we find where your money should go, okay? Take those percentages down, 30% for housing and debt. I'm gonna explain what all that goes into. Living expenses is 26%, savings is, and investments 15%, insurance four and, and 25 on taxes. So let's break that down. This is an ideal budget. Does it always work that way? No, but it would be nice if more of it went to savings and income and investments. Go ahead. How much money is coming out and how much is going in? Typically, this can be a real eye opener for most people as they get started. Go ahead. What we want you to do is take all of your financial statements, take your debts, take your income, and a lot of it today is online. You don't get a pay stub anymore, so you need to print off a pay stub and find exactly where your money is going. There's a lot of hidden, hidden fees when it comes to uh, insurance, uh, medical insurance, um, 401s, any other taxes or anything else that you might have on your financial statement that you don't even know where it's going. So it's always great to have a pay stub or some kind of a printout of your, your income. And also gather everything, not just your bank statement. If you have child support, alimony, pensions, social security, rental, dividends, uh, if you're working two or three jobs, go ahead and put all of that together because that's gonna show you what your basis is of, of what you have to spend. Let's go to the next one. Create a list of monthly expenses. Okay, so what goes in to that 30% of, of debt and, and the mortgage or your rent? So mortgage, rent, your car payment, any credit cards you might have, um, anything that you are, uh, your student loans, that's all part of your debt. Go to, and when it comes to the next part, which is living expenses, you've got eating out, you've got gasoline for your car, you've got um, anything, if you have children, all those expenses that come along with kids, uh, you groceries, um, any uh, 
how about Christmas? Are we having a cash Christmas this week, this year, or are you putting it all on, on plastic or how, how are you going to have a Christmas? Go ahead with the next, uh, next part of it. Okay. So the, go ahead and go back, please. So gather the information and then we provide this kind of monthly budget where you can see where all your expenses are going. You have in the insurance, you have car insurance, you have health insurance. And a lot of times coming out, out of the military, you know, coming out of the military, everything's been taken care of. And now you're going to have to take care of that and learn about what what's what's the proper thing to have. How much if there is life insurance that you want to buy, how much are, do you need? What about medical insurance? Who's going to provide it for you? Those things are, are so important. Those are those daily, monthly bills that you have to have to pay or else you don't have it. So those are the things that we want to share. What are those things that you need to know about to get to the point of having a green total bottom line or a red bottom line? Go to the next one. Create your monthly expenses separated into two categories. Go ahead. Fixed expenses. <coughs> Fixed expenses are relatively the same, like your, your rent or your mortgage payment. Um, a lot of times your water bill is, is constant, but your, you know, your lights and your gas, they alternate if depending. And uh, in the wintertime, some of it goes up and, and some of it goes down. So you have to really, those, those are fixed and variables. Car payment is a, is a fixed, your internet service, your credit card uh, payments, insurance payments. Those are fixed payments that you, a lot of times cannot change unless you go back on, inter, like in insurance, you can go back and read, uh, get a better quote. That's some of the things that we help people with. Variable expenses that change from month to month, groceries, gas, Yes. And Jay, can we accelerate a little bit? Your, your time has gone. Okay. So gifts. And if we go to the next one, please. Keep going. Add it up. See where it's going. Keep going back. Keep going. Make adjustments. All right. Make adjustments if you don't, if you're in the red. Those are the things that we help people to do. Keep going. Keep going. Now that you've made a budget, it's only a plan. It's not anything that's in that's in stone. So, but the thing that you want to do is be aware on the on the uh, saving. You need to put away ten percent of your income, whether it's a dollar or ten dollars, and that way every month you'll have a little bit to put into savings. Finish up. Thank you for your time. My name is Mary Jo Ebert. I have put in the chat, uh, I go by MJ. <coughs> we uh, do have a Thursday night that is complimentary. Everything we do is complimentary for people. We do not charge to get them out of debt or to sit down and, and do a plan for them. Uh, the main thing that is so important is knowledge. And I want to thank you all. Thank you, Emma, for inviting me to give this tip. Thank you so much for the education. All right, we are going to wrap this up. I'm sorry, we're a little bit over time. We're already starting to lose some people. Um, so I am going to um, kind of fast forward through the last few parts of the presentation slide deck. David, could you bring that back up, please? Okay, I saw it for a second. Where was it? Okay, so I want to thank everybody of the presenters for informing and educating us today. Um, if you're interested in continuing to participate more intentionally in facilitated conversations like this, I invite you to consider becoming an American Warrior of the ACA Business Club. So next slide. I am relaunching the American Warriors discussion group in late January. It's going to be the fourth Thursday of the month. So it'll be the week after the Purple Connection. 
It'll be from two to three in the afternoon in the business club of Overland Park, um, but it will also be streamed. So people can meet in person, but we will also live stream that meeting. So some of the conversations, some of the questions that may not have occurred today, because we're trying to kind of inform, get people to be aware of some of this information, we can dive a little bit deeper in some of that conversation in an American Warriors dis discussion group. Now, that will be something that only members and their guests will be able to attend. So here are some of the benefits of becoming an American Warrior, which is becoming a member of the club. The uh, guest invitations will be offered up to three to six times in the year based on the status of the person, if they're a community member or a transitioning service person. But some of the benefits of being a member of the club is that you have access to any of the club facilities anywhere, wherever we have one. Some of our clubs are in other metros, some of, and we also have a virtual club. So kind of like this event, any, anyone in ACA can have access to this, to this meeting. Um, so there's over 20 interest groups. American Warriors is only one. You have the opportunity to join a business development team. You have access to all of the events as well as directory for all of the club members, wherever they are. There's always opportunities for live and virtual networking and learning every week. And there's also leadership opportunities if you're looking to become involved as a leader in a team, a group, or a club location. Next slide. So if you're interested and have any questions whatsoever about the American Warriors, the club, or the Purple Connection community and how you can get involved or participate, give me a call, uh, send me a note. Next slide. And a preview for next month. So the lineup for next month, we've got a veteran entrepreneur who's from the Air Force, Christian Amon, who is a home inspector. Military support nonprofit is Dana Johnson, who's the Kansas City chapter leader for Veterans for Life. She is a local police officer. We have our military friendly corporate, who is Heather Laporta, who is a realtor with Team Integrity um, of Keller Williams. And our transition tip will be provided by Sharon Keller, who is a military spouse, who is a real estate consultant. So that wraps up our event this month. Thank you, everyone. This is a quote that I really like. I think it kind of speaks to the um, character of the people who would be involved in the Purple Connection. Service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on Earth. Have a very good evening, everyone, and we'll see you next month.